はい、つみ、りょうたやまだ。Details of Yukon River Kayak 2700km Part 2 Bennett to Wingingham This video is complement for my YouTube video Yukon River 2700km Solo Kayak Adventure from the South Lake So please leave for it In here, there are South Lakes of Yukon River And this red line is、uh, my actual kayak trace taken by GPS. And、uh, this green mark as a tent is、uh, my actual tent site. This is a Tagish lake, and this is a Bennett lake. I started from here, Bennett. And then, first day, I camped in there. Here is the starting point at Bennett, just in front of Bennett Station. For this expedition, I choose this kayak made by Feathercraft called Heron, but unfortunately, you cannot buy. It because the feather craft closed. It's a holding seatback. You can craft it and you can carry this by plane, train, etc. And it's a single seat and it's an expedition model, so you can carry a lot of gears inside here. I put the solar panel behind me on the deck like this. It's a movie when I just started. You can see the behind me、uh, Bennett station. It's a scenery at this point. I was intentionally rolled. Just the right side to turn around the kayak and show you the entire scenery. Here is a starting point, and here is the first camping point. The place was so beautiful. Very clear water. So quiet. Just only me. And nice sound of nature. Not only here, but along the entire Yukon River. You have to be careful about、uh, the bear because the Alaska and Canada is a bear country and、uh, usually local people carry the rifle, although I cannot. At least you have to carry some gears to protect from bears. Actually, I saw the bear at here and a lot of place as well. I'm gonna talk to the day two from here to the there. It's a 360 degree view on the kayak. Here is the shore. I pitched the tent covered with rounded covers, which is 
very clear, without a doubt, without a mouth. Very beautiful, sure. It was. There was a narrow stream out to the lake. I fished several gray links. It's a delicious fish. You can fish easily it. From the Bennett starting point, I paddled and made a camp and made a camp again and paddled and finally returned to the Kalkros. It's a Kalkros. Uh, my tent and uh, it's a narrow channel between the lakes. I camped at Kalkros and then heading to the White Horse. Before kayaking, I didn't have any information around there and uh, I asked to the local person to know the condition of these lakes in Kakuros and uh, people said people gave me uh, advice that uh, you could not paddle you could not kayak in these lakes because there, there are uh, strong wind even the local person with motor boat did not enter into the lake when wind blew and there was a history in Klondike gold rush age a lot of people were capsized in this area in the lakes and uh, local person also advised me the point called windy arm there are especially strong wind blows Windy arm. Windy arm is uh, here, and the wind blows from here to uh, this direction. So it's difficult to kayak across the, this area. This figure explains how waves is made. Waves is made by wind, and the longer distance wind blows on the surface of water, the higher waves are made. And this length is enough to make uh, high waves and also local person advised me do not paddle along the shore left side of shore like this because uh, there is uh, no point to pull up the kayak there is uh, no point to escape when the wind is getting high and uh, in the history a uh, lot of boats uh, capsized broke on the shore of the left side according to the advices from local person I was very careful and then I reached Windy Arm. I feel some wind 
so I decided to return to here to make a tent to wait when to settle in midnight 11 p.m. wind suddenly settled and the surface of all lakes are very calm no waves just the flat and the smooth surfaces so I thought oh it's a very big chance to across the windy arm I hardly collapsed the tents and start to kayaking. Even in midnight in June there were white nights and I could paddle without a headlight. But when I arrived around here, wind started to blow suddenly. Strongness of wind is getting higher and higher quickly. I couldn't return to the starting point because the direction of wind and waves. What I could is just synchronize to the waves and keep the kayak around here. One of the biggest waves hit my kayak and I was almost capsized upside down in the middle of the big lakes into the cold water. I thought I gonna die. Now I think there was a possibility, 50% possibility to die in there. Fortunately, I could escape to capsize, but uh, I have to, still I have to fight against the waves around f for maybe one or two hours. What is the biggest issue is the unpredictableness of wind and waves. It will be relatively easy kayak if you can use the forecast, wind forecast or weather forecast, but you cannot. It means so to paddling in here becomes just uh, gambling between easy kayak and this because wind and wave in here have uh, ability to become very strong as uh, wave and wind of ocean in storm. It's a reason why I never recommend to kayak here even if you are a good sea kayaker you have a good experience paddling in ocean. I'll try to make a next video to explain Eagle River kayaking so subscribe if you wanna see that one. See you again.